And welcome back to Mornings with Joe Catanacci here on The Big Talker, 106.7 FM. Yael Osaski filling in for you today. We've had a great deluge of guests talking about all topics. Uh, we've got those planned for the rest of the day as well. But I wanted to bring on one particular commentator, TV personality, podcast host, the man, the myth, the legend. We're talking with Mr. Stephen Kent. He's the author of the book, How the Force Can Fix the World, Lessons on Life, Liberty, and Happiness from a Galaxy Far, Far Away. You might be familiar with seeing Stephen on television. He is the host of Right Now on Rightly, which you guys can subscribe to on YouTube, and also a host over there on the Beltway Banthas podcast. Stephen, thanks so much for taking the time. Very, uh, very much thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So let's get into this. You've got a brand new book coming out. Um, it's on a pre-order right now, comes out, uh, I believe, in late October. And you're giving us some lessons on politics, on society, on life, related to the entire world of Star Wars. And before we get too much into those details, if you had to compare between the world of Star Wars and the world of Star Trek... For those people who are into science fiction, what are the kind of main takeaways uh, that really make those different, and why do you think you're a bit more drawn to the Star Wars world? You know, that's an interesting question. I, I get that a lot, and it's it's one of those things where I have to be honest and say that I've just sort of always had a very monogamous relationship with Star Wars, and it is not out of any particular animus towards Star Trek. I just happen uh, to have been raised on the wars and the the differences as far as I see them and I've understood them for many years is that Star Trek has a sort of utopian ethic. It is a a future of a, of a galaxy, of a world, of a human species who is enlightened, evolved, and has been able to overcome some of what you might consider to be sort of like base human flaws, right? Um, Star Wars is a circular story of war, conflict, destruction, despotism, and the human search for freedom. It, I think, is much more grounded in our understandings of the human experience, our brokenness, um, our struggles with fear, and then also our hope for lives without fear and with, uh, with more strength. So I just think that Star Wars is a more honest story about the human, <laughs> the human condition than Star Trek, and that's why I've always been more drawn to it. There we go. We're speaking with Stephen Kent here on Big Talker FM. He's the author of the book, How the Force Can Fix the World. You can go ahead and pre-order that over there on the Amazon and wherever else you get your books. I'm looking at some of the themes and core principles that you mention here, hope, choice, humility, empathy, redemption, balance, and rejecting fear. And sort of what your book aims to do is to, to provide the kind of roadmap and to connect the lessons from Star Wars to our lives living today. So if, if I could ask, what was the, sort of the, the main push that got you into uh, not just writing about this book, but I know you do this a good amount as you relate real-life lessons that come from this film series? What exactly kind of pushed you in that direction? Well, I, I think for me, it's just, you know, my, my own life experiences growing up as a Star Wars fan. And, and we all have different Star Wars quotes that we go back to and we rely on for strength. And, you know, my mom, um, not a huge Star Wars fan, if, if there was ever a problem and, and something that she needed to solve, she would, she'd know exactly what page of the Bible to open up to and exactly which verse to tell you. Uh, to go to. And one of the things that I am most concerned about in our, our society right now is the rapid secularization of America, the lack of shared texts, sh uh, lack of shared social fabrics and ways to communicate to one another so that we have sort of a, a, a shared Bible, a shared sort of things that give us a morality and different virtues that we center our lives around. And one of my, my main theses going into writing this book is that Star Wars is incredibly popular and it is an incredibly effective cipher for all sorts of different uh, and profound world philosophies. There was a study that came out in 2019 by Statista that showed that only 37% of Americans do not consider themselves to be Star Wars fans. And I kind of spun that out to be like, you know, if you wanted to connect with a random stranger on the street about 
about anything. I, I would bet $100 that you would have a better connection with a stranger over whether or not they can recognize Boba Fett than whether or not they can recognize Thomas Jefferson. Um, I, I just think that Star Wars is something that ties a lot of people together in ways that we, we need to talk about and go to it for different pieces of wisdom and advice. Um, you know, when my child is trying to work on her, her swing in baseball, I tell her there is, a, there is no try, do or do not, there is no try. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces of advice from Yoda. And, you know, I just, I think that this book is meant to be a self-help guide for personal issues that you can spin out towards the realm of the political. We're talking a lot about democracy nowadays in our political language, uh, people mentioning the ransacking of the capital, uh, people talking about Central European countries like Hungary and whether or not they have democracy. What are the lessons from Star Wars when it comes to what democracy is is democracy important as a principle? And, and what more can we learn mm. from that? Yeah, so I think the number one thing is that you should assume that most of your neighbors, while they pay lip service to democracy being a good thing, and they, they generally accept constitutional order, you should assume that most people around you do have closeted totalitarian tendencies, and they would be willing to throw the rule book out in a minute if it meant protecting the things that they love and that they care about. Um, I say that with all due respect to my friends and neighbors, but you know, that's one of the things that I think I have come to really believe and accept um, about American life and really just life in the West in the past 10 years is that democracy is part of a social bargain where people are accepting rule of law and process in exchange for another thing. And if they don't feel like they're getting the thing that they thought they were, were in this system for, they will throw that thing right out. So Star Wars, the main takeaway line is in episode three, Revenge of the Sith, Padme says as the emperor is making his speech, or the chancellor is making his speech to anoint himself emperor and christen the empire. So this is how democracy dies, with thunderous applause which is to say that democracy is not a thing that is conquered by foreign powers. It's a thing that is given away by the democratic citizens, by the members of the Republic in exchange for something else. And in this case, it is safety, it is order, it is rule of law and strength. And while that is the most popular line in the movie, I actually go back often to episode two, Attack of the Clones. There's a scene where Anakin Skywalker is sitting in a field with Padme and he's asking her or she's asking him about what he thinks about, about politics. And he says, well, I think that there should be a system where people get together, uh, represent, the, represent the citizens and try to decide what is in the best interest of the public. And Padme goes, well, that's exactly what we do. The problem is that people don't always agree. And Anakin, you know, this kid is going to become Darth Vader one day. Well, he says, well, then they should be made to. She goes, who is going to make them? You? And he just kind of laughs. And he's like, eh, you know, maybe. And, you know, honestly, I just, I fear that that is the mindset of most people. They would be willing to go that way if it was something that they cared about enough. You're listening to Mornings with Joe Catanacci, Yael Osaski filling in here on The Big Talker FM. We're speaking with Stephen Kent. He's the author of How the Force Can Fix the World. Uh, Stephen, one alternative sort of reading that I've, I've read, uh, I'm not too deep in the Star Wars literature, so please uh, forgive me, but I have read that there's kind of alternative ways of viewing uh, good and evil and who the real bad guy was. And you see the evolution throughout the Star Wars movies and films of seeing Anakin Skywalker kind of grow. And it's as if, you know, once you see the entire version of events, who you really think is good and who you really think is evil, uh, that kind of changes. Are there other lessons we can kind of take from Star Wars on that? Well, Star Wars has a, a consistent theme going all the way back to its original movie in 1977, when Obi-Wan is or speaking to uh, Luke Skywalker, and excuse me, it's not uh, the original, it is Return of the Jedi. He is talking to him about the truth uh, of, of Luke's upbringing, because he originally had told Luke that, um, you know, his father was killed by Darth Vader, that Darth Vader was not in fact his father. And he, <laughs> he tries to cover up that lie by saying, well, Luke, what I told you originally about your father being killed by Darth Vader uh, was true from a certain point of view. And ever since that line, Star Wars has told numerous stories where the same events are viewed 
from different perspectives. And the whole point that George Lucas tried to, to zero in on throughout those kinds of stories is to help people understand that their realities and their versions of truth are entirely subjective. And you could say that that is right. You could say that's wrong. I, I'm not saying that we should embrace a postmodernist ethic where there is no such thing as truth, right? Like there's, a, there's 20 or 100 genders and sexes. I don't believe that at all. But we should try to understand that the way that we live our lives is tied to what we have experienced versus what we've not experienced. And so that when we talk to our, our friends, you know, the things that they say are true can only be considered true if they haven't gotten the counterfactual before. They've never been presented other pieces of evidence. Um, Star Wars cares deeply about this, and it, it tries to drive home that point numerous times by having its dark side characters, people who fall to the dark, being relatively good people with good intentions. Darth Vader is chief among them in the prequel trilogy, Count Dooku, the guy, the old guy uh, who, who leads the separatist movement and starts the civil war against the Jedi and the Republic. He also really went into this with good intentions, not because he was a a finger twiddling villain who just wanted to destroy the galaxy. He actually just thought the Republic was corrupt and the Republic was corrupt. And he thought that a new regime needed to be implemented so people could govern themselves. It's a relatively noble aim, but still he's the villain because we're watching these movies from the Jedi's perspective. Fascinating book. I hope you guys do pick it up, hit it in your uh, cart, do that pre-save. How the Force Can Fix the World, Lessons on Life, Liberty, and Happiness from a Galaxy Far, Far Away. Stephen Kent, thanks so much for taking the time today. It was a real pleasure. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. And we'll be right back here on Mornings with Joe Catanacci. Yael Osaski filling in.